Hello everyone, and this is going to be my alpha autopsy of the first stage of the alpha. So we're just coming to the end of our uh, exclusive pre-alpha period. So I wanted to go over uh, my experience playing it so far. Um, this has been all version Thursday night, uh, 11th October. Let's take a look at my world and what I've done. So, I'm here at my hub. First off, I want to just start by saying this has been fantastic. I've had such a good time playing with this game. It's been everything I'd hoped for so far. Uh, obviously, we are limited to the early game tech tree, so there's lots of stuff that I haven't been able to play with yet. I'm sure that we'll get a chance as more alpha stages come out. But yeah, what we've seen so far has been great um, and fantastic. Obviously, there have been a few flaws. Um, and a few problems, that's kind of the point in all this. Um, that's my primary one, the good old impossible ladders. Um, but yes, um, I'm going to walk you through everything I've done um, and talk about the problems I've had, the things I've enjoyed. This probably is going to sound overly negative because obviously the things I have more to say about are the things I've had problems with. Uh, I don't want you to get the impression I've hated this, it has been great. Um, but let's let's start this uh, at the beginning. We've got the hub. Um, this is as upgraded as it gets. Um, I've researched everything I could find. Uh, there are a few other smaller things you can get uh, via the MAM, um, which also is not quite right. There's lots of duplication going on here and it seems you can research the summer sloop indefinitely without gaining anything the hub itself has a few problems there's this floor that doesn't exist there's the um, hitbox which seems to change at some point to be much bigger than it was you can even trap a lizard doggo under there which I did by accident in a previous save so my experience with the crafting um, people have been saying that in the early game there's too much handcrafting, it takes too long, which is a fair point. Um, I think you need to be exposed to an amount of that so that you uh, get the, well, this is awesome moment when you get your first constructor doing it for you. Um, one thing I do have issue with is the workshop. I really don't get the point. It seems to just be another crafting bench that only makes specific things that you very rarely need to make. The only thing you regularly make here is the portable miner, and I feel like that probably shouldn't even be there if it's going to be the recipe for uh, an actual miner. None of this factory you're seeing is what I had as I was progressing through the game. I've ripped that up since and made uh, late game factories. I should say this save is 24 hours of play um, and that's about how long it's taken me to finish all the research and then build a decent factory for everything I can make. So let's start with this one. This is what I'm imagining lots of early game um, factories are gonna look like. Uh, let's go up here where we've got a good view. It's my copper site, so it's making wires and cables. So I've just got a drill, um, and that's being split there between the two smelters. And then I've got three constructors splitting their results with splitters and mergers um, into constructors. So you can see I've done this all freehand on the ground. I've not used any um, foundations. I found it quite easy to do. The one thing that remains an absolute sod is <laughs> trying to line things up. But yeah, there's this uh, this turquoise blue marker that tells you when you're in line. Uh, but the problem is it only appears when you're in exactly the right spot and there's no snapping. So it's very hard to align to it. Um, I th think it would be great if we could just snap to these. It would make building without foundations so much nicer. So that aside, um, this was really quick and easy to make. Um, just sort of smashed it all down on the floor once I knew what I was doing. And yeah, then I've just collected my outputs here. You can see I've had a go with the colour gun. I wanted to colour these based on what was being collected there, so I've tried to do the colour of the wires there and the colour of cables there. Um, 
and over here I've got something similar for concrete um, meant to be white but yeah it didn't really work you can't really see the colors so I found it doesn't have much of a practical use the color gun obviously nice for just respraying things if that's what you want to do for aesthetic reasons but yeah um, <laughs> what are you doing um, so yeah that brings me to the next thing the automated tractors um, yeah it's a nice system I like it but um, the first thing I noticed is you can see uh, the vehicles teleporting as they get into the distance I'm gonna try and achieve that now whoa 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 steady on uh, so yeah, in a second he'll head off. The other thing is they don't seem to reliably get fed by this. Um, this guy rarely gets loaded and rarely gets um, given fuel. Uh, it seems that he has this time. But a lot of the time he doesn't uh, get refueled so I would keep finding him in the middle of his path uh, out of fuel. Okay, so off he goes, hopefully. Um, <laughs> What are you doing, man? What's that meant to be? Okay, so let's climb up here where we can see him. So there he goes. It's not very far away, and I can already see him teleporting between the path nodes. I get why that has to be a thing, but obviously it's a bit dodgy that I can see it happening. Other than that, uh, I like the sugar cube. That's all cool. Um... Moving on, this is my um, smelting operation for the iron, so this is quite industrial. This is the one place I've used overclocking, because um, these are normal. Each power shard I add uh, lets me add another smelter, so that seemed an efficient use of my shards. I have to say I didn't feel like I wanted to use my power shards on anything other than drills, just because it's such a limited resource. Um, I felt really discouraged from using it on anything else because um, if I were to start using it on constructors as part of one of my factories um, you're going to use them up very quickly and not have enough because of all the repeating units um, so anyway, yeah, you can see I've done quite simple stuff there and then I'm merging them up two smelters onto one belt to get a full thing and yeah, so I've got six belts worth using the multi-poles here. Um, I liked using the multi-poles. Uh, the one thing I would say is it would be great if there was a way to, when extending across, to have it extend all three belts for you, so you don't have to do the same operation three times. Um, but yeah, that's just a small quality of life thing. Would be nice to have. So then we enter Belt Spaghetti City. This is my main factory area. Um, I've done this in a modular way, so I've got a separate factory for each thing I'm making, each with its own foundation. Um, and <laughs> I have to say, um, I love how... Oh, there goes my alarm. I love the way all of this is looking. I'm going to go down to my watchtower so you can see um, what I've got. So I love all of these uh, belts going everywhere, it looks super cool. <laughs> I was thinking about doing it with automated vehicles but as those seem a bit buggy I didn't yet and also um, <laughs> I just think this looks awesome. <laughs> I'm sure it gives people with OCD a headache um, but oh, I love this. Um, so I've got a few different factories, let's start with the rod factory because it's the one I made first. So I came up with this weird belt cyclone thing where the belts um, get pulled off one at a time by the factory from... Oh, I've fallen down. I'm professional. So yeah, I always pull off from this bottom right belt, feed it into my factory. I'll talk more about my experience building that in a moment. And then the one above comes down to become the bottom right and the opposite's happening on this side, these slope up and then the top one crosses over 
That way I've always got my products on this side, and when I need more, I'll be able to feed them in on this side as they open up. Um, I don't know if I'll actually use that, but yes. I call it the Belt Cyclone! Um, but I like the way it looks. Um, I sort of came across that by accident and thought it looked really cool. I love the, uh, the appearance of belts snaking everywhere, as you can no doubt tell. So, building this... Um, very mixed feelings about building on concrete and trying to build in a compact way. So, you can see I've got lots of splitters close to each other. This is one of the first ones I've made. I don't really use this method of splitting anymore, but yeah. Um, this is a supposedly a legal placement. Um, I'm guessing it's not meant to be, because these are overlapping, but it even lets you connect the belts up. Basically, my thoughts were that it would be, if you're going to be allowed to build this close together at least, um, I feel like you shouldn't have to bother with the belts. You should just be able to plug these machines straight into them, snap straight onto the input outputs and have these plug in. Um, and that would just feel intuitive and simple, uh, rather than having to make these small connections and then plug belts between them all. I did find in this version, compared to the previous, that uh, placing objects lined up with their inputs and outputs is a lot easier, thanks to the addition of that blue line. Um, before that was hellish on concrete, because you couldn't tell if things were lined up at all. Um, the only way I could really do it was by climbing on top, and even then that wasn't great. But yeah, so that's a big improvement. I um, feel like it does still need more feedback, as I discussed before, um, but yeah. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to this, and it repeats all the way down there, making lots and lots of rods. I'm collecting them at this end, uh, much the same way as the other side, but with mergers, and those are all going down here. So this has worked out to be a perfect ratio for everything, and that worked fine. I think that makes good sense for this early game product. It's easy to make, and easy to work out how to do it effectively. So I'm buffering them all up here in these containers. Not much more to say about that. Uh, you can see I've had to make a concrete pillar here so that I could get the belt over each other and under each other and get a path for my vehicles. Um, I feel like, whilst that's fine, um, it would be nice to be able to either stack these poles, uh, that would definitely be my preference if you could put as many of these on top of here as you like, or have a height control option like with the single poles. But even then, I think you need a lot more height variation option than those single poles give you. Otherwise, you're going to have to build little concrete things everywhere just so you can get belts above and below each other, which becomes quite important in machines, as you will see later at my attempts with some of the assembler factories. Um, so over here, I've got much the same, but for... Um, iron plates. Okay, so this next factory was my first learning experience trying to do an assembler factory. So, I've got rods coming in down there, and I went above with the plates so that I could get the belts in over the other belts. Because um, obviously if they were side by side it would have been a problem. And I didn't want to put different materials on one stack of three, which was probably a mistake. Um, as you'll see, I've adopted that later on. Um, so building this, um, the ratios are a lot harder, because um, these produce 150 screws, but these, making the reinforced plates, want 180. So I tried to make that work in a manageable way, but ended up being quite complicated the way I was trying to do it. So I gave up, um, and I've just underclocked these to take 150 screws. Well, I think about this interface, obviously it's intuitive that you just choose a percentage difference and you get 50% based on a power shard. I feel like what you really want to do is choose how many resources you want to make slash require, because that's really what I was doing this based on, and so I had to get out my calculator and work out the percentage I needed, not helped by the fact that these numbers don't update until it completes a cycle, uh, so I couldn't even just sort of tick through here and find the right percentage easily. So yeah, I feel like that interface could use a bit of work. It looks really cool though. Um, 
love the appearance of all the UI. So you can see down here I'm feeding the rods in as I did uh, with ingots before. Um, but up here I've used splitters. And I feel like this should be the encouraged kind of obvious way of taking things off a belt. I'm not saying you should tell people to do things that way, as that obviously defeats the point in a game like this. You're meant to learn and discover these things. But um, I think this should be a good way of doing it. It's very intuitive just to place a um, place your splitter straight onto the belt and then pull things off. It makes great sense. It's easy to do and it's what you would expect. Okay, I want to split this belt, so I build a splitter on it and I can take resources from it. And because of the distribution system the splitters have, that basically always works in the way you want, which is great. However, obviously, as you can see, um, the splitters don't actually fit on these three pole belts properly. So here I've abused one bug that lets me build a belt on the top of it, um, which makes this look acceptable. Um, I don't know whether that kind of placement is meant to be legal. I think it probably should be. I think that's actually quite good being able to place belts over your buildings. And to be honest, I would encourage the addition of building other buildings straight on top of each other. Like I was talking about with the poles, I think you should just be able to do that with anything. Stack anything on top of anything else, uh, as long as it makes some kind of sense. Like, I don't think it would make sense to build things on power poles. Um, even other power poles, that would look silly. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I would say you don't want to have to be doing this every time you put a splitter in though, that would defeat the whole point of it being, you know, it, de it takes away the fact that that's nice and intuitive. Um, so over here I've got the same thing, but I've done it very slightly differently. This time I built all the belts first, and then was able to just place a splitter onto them like that, and this belt just is allowed to continue through it. This is what I think you should be allowed to do. Because um, it's simple, it works, you don't have to mess around you with your belts to make it make sense. Um, yeah, the obviously the issue with it is it doesn't look right because these splitters are too big for the belts. Um, three solutions to this that I can think of that would let you do this, and I really think you should be allowed to. Um, so, first solution is make that smaller. Uh, so it actually fits between the belts on a three pole. Um, second solution is make the three poles taller. Uh, the other thinking for that is because the three poles don't actually match anything else really. They're not the height of any building. They're not the height of concrete. So you could extend it to be the height of uh, two foundations. Um, then the third solution uh, that a lot of people have mentioned is it would be cool if we could essentially have one building that is this, a triple splitter, so like the triple pole, uh, and then the same for mergers. Um, that would be quite a simple way of doing that, so they just each split their own line independently and also act as a triple pole. So my second assembler factory is doing the rotors over here. Let's take a look. So here I've completely committed to splitting this way. Um, it made my life so much simpler and it felt the right way to do it, so all my resources are being split off their main feed belt using this. Um, this gives me an opportunity to show you one of the other bugs here. It seems when you place splitters onto existing belts you get this weirdness where the uh, <laughs> It adds a section of reverse belt. No idea why or how, but there it is. Um, and those seem to stack up more and more the more you do it. Uh, yep. Yeah. So here again, um, the ratios don't work out in a friendly way, so I had to uh, underclock, um, which is fine. Um, I like the fact that that gives you an extra challenge to try and solve if you want to, but you can just not bother if you're happy with the lack of efficiency and you can underclock to save power. Like all that, I think that is really great. Um, and I had a good scratch of my head doing all this and it was fun. Here you can see a problem I've had um, with foundations. Um, interestingly, now it's letting me place this, but I found most of the time, um, and indeed when I originally removed that, um, you can accidentally remove these 
And when you do, um, you're going to be unable to put them back. Interestingly, it's now spontaneously letting me. Um, hmm. <laughs> but yes, I found in most cases you can't place foundations under things, but you can remove them. Typical that it's not happening now that I want to demonstrate it, but there you go. Um, and that was driving me mad because I would then have to remove the constructor to put it back. And to replace the constructor, I'd have to remove all the belts leading into it. And so it just meant I had to destroy a huge amount of my factory and rebuild. Uh, but yes, I'm sure that's a bug just with the way uh, the builder boards work. Um, so my last factory is the modular frames. Uh, this I've done slightly differently, but it's the same kind of deal. Um, again, this bug. Um, you can see here, I've used the um, three pole. I've tried to do it in a way that looks right with the current state of things. So I've got one uh, resource on the bottom, one on the top, and I'm not using the middle belt. That way the belts don't need to go straight through splitters um, and this looks like legal placement. does mean though that if you want to do this you just can't use one of the three belts of a three pole and that seems uh, just a bit odd and uh, arbitrary. Oh yeah there is a, a little other bit I'd like to discuss which is um, when you're building lots of foundations uh, I'm not going to have the concrete on me to do it um, it becomes really hard to see what's what is your building because these are very opaque ghosts so they become when you're placing lots in one go it becomes hard to tell what's the ghost what's the uh, existing ones and indeed when you're building them they take a little while to pop up and you can snap onto them while they're not built and I found that very confusing when I was trying to build a lot um, and sort of building in general with walls and concrete I found very fiddly uh, the way they collide with buildings, deciding whether or not placement is allowed, uh, seemed very inconsistent and depended on the order you built things in. Um, so for now I've basically just written off using walls, especially walkways. I'm sure you're aware that walkways currently make very little sense, particularly the walkway ramp I'm going to attempt to demonstrate, but I've found that um, if you do this it's impossible to get another downward ramp next to it and they just don't really want to join up in the ways you would want them to uh, but I'm sure that's in progress. Editing mug from the future here. Just realised the past mug forgot something important. At the point I had to get these extra resources in order to extend my factories I then had to obviously build uh, repeating units of things I had already built before to add more factories producing rods and plates. And I have to admit, it was tedious. Uh, I had to build things I'd already built uh, in exactly the same way. Uh, obviously, it was my decision to do it exactly the same way, but I'd already found an efficient way of doing it, and it made sense, so that's what I wanted my factory to be like. But I had to place it all pixel by pixel, structure by structure, and it was not a fun time. I think if, as the game progresses, I'm required to make even more rods, which I can only assume I will be, um, if I had to do it in this way, I would probably get frustrated, I have to be honest. Obviously you may have something else in mind that solves that problem, but if we are expected to continuously expand our old factories like that, um, I really, really hope we have some sort of mass building blueprint system. I know this has been mentioned a lot, but it really is important if this is going to be a thing we have to do, because I would not want to have to rebuild this factory over and over again. I remember when I was talking to Jace about this he said one of the problems was the 3D nature of things. Um, I can see how that would solve problems if you had like if you tried to copy buildings that were built on the ground uh, they're all going to be at slightly different heights but you could just limit this to anything built on foundations um, which I think would make sense. But yeah even if it was a simple copy paste doesn't need to be an elaborate blueprint system I think that would be a really big important feature for this game to have. Anyway, enough said, I'm going to hand over to past Mug. Uh, to return to the ladder problem, <laughs> um, I have found the ladders near impossible to use. They damage me much more often than um, enemies do. Um, just trying to get down a ladder, obviously going up them is fine, 
Uh, but half the time I can't catch this thing, and then once I'm falling I struggle to catch it, even if I bump right into it, it seems to not let me catch it. And yeah. Um, so, would really, really like to see some ladder improvements. Um, but obviously that's not a game-breaking bug. So, um, my overall thoughts are, this has been really fun. Um, I love the way the game looks, I love the way the game feels. Um, Obviously there are bugs, that's why we're here. Uh, I hope I've highlighted some ones that have come up often and have been a pain. Building factories, obviously the process of that is fun, but it's much more clumsy than I feel like it should be. Obviously you've taken steps towards that with the blue line, but I feel that's not quite enough. But yes, I have had a fantastic time. Uh, love the way everything's looking. Um, really pleased with my spaghetti madness here. And yeah, I hope this has uh, been helpful and highlighted some things that are of some use to you to see. Um, so yes, until next time, mug out, ta -ra.